want to support what we do here, go to mwpnews.com and click the Help Us Out link to buy one of my ebooks for $2.99, or you can support directly at bewareofspoilers.com. Welcome to Exploring Hyperspace Lanes. I'm Adam. And I'm Josie. And we actually have stuff to talk about today. Well, besides my rant that I warned you about two days ago. Yeah. Um, so, first off, in Star Wars news, you never played the original Battlefront or Battlefront 2. Right? Right. Um, well, the, what's it called? The, uh, they, they've remastered them. I've heard. And they're coming out this month. Yeah. Um, are you going to play the remastered version of both of them? I might do. They, I think it should be like 30 bucks for both of them. Um, on Switch, PS5, Xbox Series X, and Steam. If you are like me and already own them on Steam, you can buy the upscaled version or the new version for a discount. Um, so, does this make you likely to buy it? Yeah, I'm probably gonna buy it. Cause uh, what was it? What was the other one? Dark Dark Forces Remaster came out today or yesterday. Mm-hmm. The game for the uh, N64. I don't know. Well, you remember from uh, The Mandalorian Season 2, the robot stormtroopers, the dark troopers? Mm-hmm. Those come from that game. Oh. Yeah. Like, which is why, like, when, when we talk about, like, how I feel about Dave Filoni taking over as CCO of, of Lucasfilm, it's mm-hmm. kind of like he uses the stuff he thinks is cool. It's like a little kid with his toys. He uses the toys that he thinks are cool. Anything else, it's like, well, no. Um, okay. And that's one of the things where it's like, he doesn't want to include, he, he wants to include the Death Troopers, it's a cool idea. Cool, he's going to put that in. He wants to mm-hmm. include, um, what was the other one? Um, he wants to include, um, who was the other big person who wasn't canon that he recanonized recently? I feel like that definitely just happened. Oh, Thrawn. Thrawn's cool, so he's going to put Thrawn in. Like, if he doesn't like it, or he doesn't think it's cool, he's just going to be, you know, no. Okay. Um, so, it, it, it's just, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that, because it's like, look, there are a lot of cool characters, and if you're going to be the ultimate arbitrator... And ultimately, it just comes down to my opinion differs from his. Mm-hmm. Because, like, if it was me, I would have had, um, like, Mara Jade would be canon by now. Okay. Like, because she's Yeah, cool. me too. Um, Mara Jade is pretty cool. Yeah, I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head who I'm like, who isn't canon, that would be cool to have in there. Um... Because, like, I, I don't know, like, I, I can't really think of anyone else. Um, but, uh, what was the other big thing? Um, my car is fucked up. Okay. Um, on, on the topic of, uh, random conversation, uh, my car is fucked up in a unique way. Mm-hmm. So, if I am, uh, driving, and it's raining out, like, today, um, I guess there's something fucked up in my radio where i get this like electrical popping and feedback like white noise electrical feedback okay um okay okay you're talking about white light what i I don't know what you're (laughs) talking about (laughs) like like you know like the like electrical feedback like you ever have a thing where it's like your speaker like the plug that goes into the speaker The speaker that goes yes, in. Yes, I uh, understand. Yeah. That's what the okay is. Okay, well, you seem confused. So, it, uh, it is a what's it called? It, it's one of those things where it's like it's just constant the entire time I'm driving. 
Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. Oh, well, don't worry about it. Get Well, like no, but... I don't have I don't have a I don't have a radio. Well, no, the issue is it even happens when the radio is off. Unplug it. Well, I don't know what to do that. And the Look thing at is, the too, speakers. and I think it's too, my, my car is one of those ones. I, I hate this design thing that's new in cars or fairly new in cars where the radio is built into the dash like console. Mm -hmm. Like and your your climate control is all built into the same thing. Like, why? Like, why is it all one thing? So, you gotta like take like I because I looked up because I had that idea too. Like, let me just disconnect the radio, and do that. So I looked up a YouTube video how to get the radio out. As like you gotta take the first, you have to open your glove box. Then you have to like use a crowbar and take this off. Then you gotta 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 pull this entire climate control thing out. Then I'm like, fuck it, I will just deal with it. Um, Okay. So it's not under warranty because it's a cosmetic thing, because it's a radio. Yeah. You don't need a radio. Just put a Bluetooth speaker in your car. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna end up doing that. Um. But uh. But yeah, I have to look at you know Bluetooth speakers. Um, what was the other thing? Um, did you hear about the the thing? I texted you about it cryptically um, earlier in the week about then the. There's the, no way that I remember it. The funny Star Wars thing that happened like two days ago. Um, so the Cosmic Circus, which is fitting because it's run by a bunch of clowns, um, decided to put out a story that they claimed came from an insider. And you would have thought after this week with what happened with the Pokemon Presents, people would be more um, careful about listening to insiders. Because the Pokemon Presents happened Tuesday. Leading up to it, people were like, oh, we're going to get remakes of, of Black and White. Oh, we're going to get, get, you know, remakes of Gold and Silver. Oh, we're going to get this, we're going to get this. No one was correct. No leaker was correct. It was uh, a Legends game set in the future with uh with x and y um with what ended up being announced so you would think people would be like you know what maybe we shouldn't listen to people who just claim to have insiders and just like they're just saying things for attention whatever it is what it is um cosmic circus reports that there's a title for the new jedi order movie um and the title that they say the movie should be released under is star wars episode 10 a new beginning and I'm like, great, let me write this down. This will be one of the things we talk about. Within an hour, Lucasfilm publicly refuted that. Okay. Which is kind of funny to me, because Lucasfilm doesn't refute anything. Um, <laughs> like... They, they, they'll they just let rumors ride, even if they're patently incorrect. Like, there was a whole thing with Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny, where it was like, there was a rumor going around for a while that was like, in the first act, Indiana Jones dies, and then, um, uh, what's her name? Who was the, the, the stepdaughter in the movie? Mm -hmm. Uh, Helena. She takes over as Indiana Jones from then on. And I'm like... He's not a fucking superhero where it's like you can adopt his name. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? And it's one of those things like, yeah, it, that that thing came from the fact they wanted to push a narrative regarding Disney and Lucasfilm, like not based at all on reality. But Lucasfilm never refuted it. Lucasfilm was never like, no, that's not true. They just kind of were like, we're, you know, we're going to whatever you want to say, say it. And then it's like it's the same with like anything with Ahsoka, anything with any of other the other shows, the other rumored shows that are rumored to be in development but not confirmed. And it's like they they are notoriously cagey when it comes to things like this. And this schmuck comes out and says they're calling it episode ten, a new beginning, and they're like, no, that's not true. Okay. You don't find this as funny as I do. No. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) 
Sorry, um, I don't I don't know. I think it's interesting. I don't know. I thought it was funny. I think but it doesn't they, bother me as much as it bothers you. It doesn't bother me. I'm 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 in favor like here's the thing. Like I have my my issues with like Gunn being like chronically online, like James Gunn, the uh, the you know the director who's currently head of DC Studios and directing mm -hmm. the uh, uh, the Superman movie. Um, he, my my like I have issues with that, but him debunking stuff that people are just making up, I appreciate that because it's just like uh, it, it's people making stuff up for attention. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't help that the new, like, the new monetization system on Twitter is built for that. Okay. Like, if you're, if you are a subscriber, like, if you pay for the, for Twitter, and you get the little blue check mark, you get what's called profit sharing, apparently. Okay. And, and I, and I, I, I read a thing about this, and I'm like, doesn't this just... Like, this doesn't help discourse. What it is, is the more interactions you get with your tweet, the more money you get. So all that that does... That makes sense, I guess. But, here's the issue. All oh, okay. it does is it makes it so that way, if you're someone who wants to make a lot of money on Twitter, all you do is you say things that are engagement bait. You make stuff up like these, you know, like these leaks, because then people will go and click on and be like, "Oh, cool, they're they're doing this." You you have intentionally bad takes. Oh, okay. Like, well, I mean, like, oh, I know this is not true. Hustlers got to hustle. Yeah, but hustlers got to hustle. But we're witnessing the downfall of Western civilization at the same time. Because it's not, it's not limited to the to the to the pop culture sphere. It's everything. It's political. It's all of that. Okay. So, it is what it is. Um, on that one. Now, our next thing is my rant. That you've been waiting right. for two days to hear. Oh, yeah. I've been waiting eagerly. Um, so... What, you, what is the rant about? What's the premise? Before you just get into it. It's... Where have we gone as a country that I can't go into a store and get correct information from the staff about a thing I'm looking for? Oh my god! Because we've we talked. Can't get into this rant. Oh my god! We we've talked about this. What before. are you? How old are you? Almost thirty. <laughs> you um, act like you're sixty. Well, well, here's the issue. Like, like we talked about it a little bit with kids the best these days. They don't know nothing about nothing in the stores. Like, that's yeah. you. Grandpa Adam, that's, yeah, but like that's you. The the issue is like we we talked about when I went to GameStop that time, and the guy I asked him about the expansion card, like the the Switch Online expansion, like bonus cards, so you can just pay for that and then just add it on to your Switch Online account. And he said it didn't exist. And I'm like, no, it definitely exists because then I went and bought it at Target. Um, mm -hmm. like I went in on two separate occasions to Best Buy over the last month and asked questions. And got incorrect information, and I knew it was incorrect. And I'm like... Then why did you ask those questions if you knew the answer? Okay, let me rephrase. I wasn't looking for the... The answer that they gave was not the answer I was looking for. The an, like, Dude, it's always been this way. If they gave me the answer I was looking for, it would have been no oh issue. Goodness. But they okay. So here, here's what it was. I'm you've, for, maybe you've just been more fortunate than others and had interactions with folks in stores that actually did know what they were talking about. If nothing's changed, people under, still don't know what they are talking about, just like they like, always have. Here's the thing: like in Best Buy, if you're if you're someone who's coded to the computer section. Like if that's you know what, what the difference is, is what? that there's there's a generational difference. The generation before us, or maybe even the one before them, did not like to admit to being wrong. These guys so are younger than me. Willing... Yeah, so I'm saying that the people our age and younger are okay with being wrong. So they will, the people older than us, if they're wrong, they'll fake it. No, and no, no. Will, but the, the issue was the people who were wrong And they used to make you here, think that they were competent, even though they were incompetent. Our the, age and younger, we don't want to perpetuate or, like, uh, try to 
imply that we're smarter than we are. So we don't do that. We don't just bluster and say, fake it till you make it. And, um, you know, if you say it with confidence, they'll believe you. Like, that's not our jam. No, no, no. But that's literally what happened was they said things with confidence. These are people younger than us. So what happened was the first time I was looking for an external 4K Blu-ray player for my laptop. So I went to Best Buy. And I wasn't 100% certain it existed. Like, that was the thing. Like, I, I don't know if they make that yet. So I was like, let me go and ask before I sit here for an hour looking for it through the store and can't find it. So I go to the guy in the computer section. It's a computer component. You would think that would be something that they would know. So I'm like, hey, do, they, do you guys have external Blu-ray players that can play 4K Blu-rays? Like, that's the, the, the important thing is it plays the 4K Blu-ray. And he's like, I don't think so, but a regular one will be able to do that. And I'm like, no, it won't. Okay. Like, like that's like, like that's the thing. It's, it's this confident, like, well, the regular one can do. It. I'm like, no, but it can't because if it could, I wouldn't be here right now because I have one of those. Like, a, a 4K Blu-ray is coded differently than a regular Blu-ray. That's why you need to buy. So what a- you're saying is that you don't like educating the youth. I shouldn't have to. It's not like I asked some random. It's not like I went to a random person in Best Buy. I went to the person who was working the computer section counter. It shouldn't be my job to to educate it's him. It's not your job. No, he, it should be his job to give me correct information. That's literally what he's getting paid to do. Oh, okay. So you're going to go, what do you want to do? Go complain to the man, manager? No, I didn't do that because I'm not paying in the ass about it. And there then the second go. time, the second time I went in, um, the second time I went in, it pissed me off because the guy was condescending about it, where it's like my laptop, I found out recently I can mobile charge. Uh, through the USB C port, and it's it's through something called like power dispersal or power displacement or something some bullshit like that, whatever it's called. It it exists and it's there. So, I I find out about this. I'm like, all right, I need to get a mobile charger that can charge my laptop, and I I go to Best Buy because that's where you would get one of these because you need a higher amperage than a standard mobile charger. So I I go over. I ask the first girl in the mobile phone section because that's where they have all that stuff. Um, do you have mobile phone charging? And she points me to where they are. I'm like, all right, great. So I go over and I find one and I'm like, all right, let me make sure that this isn't going to fuck up my laptop before I use it because you can fuck up the battery if it's the wrong amp. So I bring it over to the computer section to a different guy from last time. And I'm like, Hey, so I have a, I, I tell him the model of my laptop. It can charge through power, di- uh, power dispersal or power displacement. And I, I I don't know if this is safe to use. I don't want to mess up the battery. And he goes, well, what's the Ampere charger? And I'm like, that's not the information that's relevant here because the charger is being jacked into. Well, if you know what to, how to get the answer, why are you not just Googling this? I did Google it, but I want to double, like, here's the thing. I don't know if the asshole on Reddit is giving accurate information. Well, then figure it out yourself. Why are you relying on these other people for this information? Because they're getting paid to know this information. No, they aren't. They're getting paid to make a sale and get out of there at the end of the day. Okay, and part of making a sale is knowing what you're selling. Yeah, and they do when they're selling the freaking MacBooks and stuff. Like... They're helping you find the right thing. You can't expect right. you can't go to a car salesman and expect them to fix your engine. No, like, but then you go to the parts department, and the parts department is expected to know that. Right, if but I go, you to the, go to the parts department. I did. You went the, to the sales department. The computer section is the parts department. No, it's he's, not. That's he's the standing sales section. Next to the, no, he's standing next to the computer parts. Yes. There's a giant to wall of computer to parts. To sell them to you. Yeah, and the guy in the parts department standing in front of a wall of parts to sell those to you. Right, but he doesn't know how to put them in or anything about them other than, like, helping you find them. He's no, the but sales he will, person. But he would know. Okay, so if I, you're telling me if I went down to the local Ford dealer and said, here's my make and model car. I need a, I need a, uh, uh, what's it called? What do I need for my car that I actually do need? I need um, the, 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 the things for the battery, whatever those are called, because the guy at Walmart scolded me for that. Um, the, 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 the leads for the battery. If I went in there and I said, hi, I have a 20, I have a, uh, whatever my car is, 
Um, I'm not going to give that on the air. Um, if I, if I give them my model and I'm like, I need these, you're telling me that he'd be like, all right, here are all the leads, figure it out. No, he would go over, get them and give me the ones that fit my car. And he'd right. ask other questions first, but that's the thing. It's the exact same situation because I'm in the computer section where they sell all the now, shit. No, but for the, the thing computers. is, is is you're you're talking about going to a specialty store. Now, if you went to Walmart and you asked for the same shit from the guy working in the automotive section, he he's not too. going to know. Yeah, oh, I I can I can promise you he de- he does because he, he helped might. me find a battery. Well, then you'd be lucky. Like, and and. and but the thing is, it's like if I went over and and I said, "Hi, I'm building a computer. I need these kind of components." Then you should go able... to a specialty store where you can expect that level of service. You're expecting too much it's best from buys. a yeah. You're expecting too much from a large retail box store. So so what what kind of store should I be going to then? I'm you not should be going, going to the... a smaller store. Oh fuck! I don't know what the fuck. We don't have those out here. Small. Well, we have. Are you kidding me? You're in New York, like, bruh. You just haven't looked. Well, I I could go to B and H, but I'm not driving all the way to fucking Manhattan or driving to Queens and taking the train to Manhattan to to buy a. I don't uh, think you've even done any googling. I I. I did Google because I knew it existed. I knew the th- I knew you could charge. You know, the other option that we have nowadays, Grandpa, is you can go online and you can talk to a customer service representative with a company that actually knows what they're talking about, and they would be happy to help you make that determination. And then you could probably get it in the mail in like two days. Yeah, but I got this the same day. And and the 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 <clears throat> issue was, like, I wasn't at like you would be right if I was asking the cashier. Like if I went in and I was like, "Hi, so I have a laptop and I'm no, I'm no, trying... I'm right. No, you're not because, like, I'm not giving you this one. Because... These are fe- these. I'm sorry that your feelings make you feel so entitled to get this information from these poor children that know nothing. But it's, it's their inaccurate. job. It's their it's job. not. It it is. It's not. You're telling me that, like, the salespeople at the company I work with, if they didn't know what the parts were that we were selling, like, it's, like, it's not their job to know? Like, under your explanation, it's it's my no, job we're to talking know what the parts about... are, but not them. No. I'm saying that you've gone to a big box store and expected them to, un- to have knowledge a, a large knowledge base about the section that they may have been put in for the first time ever that day. And you're expecting that, that they're going to have this knowledge base that they just are not going to have. You need to go to somewhere that you, that is going to have that. If that's, that's not what how you Best want. Buy works. You're not assigned. They don't go like, all right, so where are we going to assign you to? Let's put you in computers. Now though, like, Computers and mobile phones and appliances and televisions, they're all separate sections. And when you apply for a job there, you apply to work in that section. Because that's where you're going to work. Because I've applied to work at Best Buy. I've interviewed at Best Buy. You apply for a department. You don't apply just general floor staff. And then they're like, hmm, where do we want to put you? Because what they do is they ask you on the interview, like, where does your expertise lie? What do you know? What do you know well and what are you interested in? Because when I was talking to them, I was like, well, I know video games, I know computers, but I, really, I know televisions and AV equipment. Like, mm-hmm. and, and they're like, all right, well, we don't really have an opening in AV right now. We only have an opening in appliance. And I'm like, I don't know anything about, about appliances. And like, all right. But that, like, it's not one, they put people with specialized information in these departments so that way they can answer the questions. Because in the past, I've gone into Best Buy and had questions answered. I don't know, man. I disagree. No, I. I, I think you're. St- I think you're expecting too much, like a boomer. I think I'm expecting a bare minimum amount of customer service. I should be able to ask, like, "Hey, this laptop." And by the way, the laptop that I have, I have a Raj uh, Zephyrus. It's not an. It's not a small model laptop. It is one of the higher end, like gaming laptops. They have a full end cap display for the current model. Like, it's not like it's one that I, like, it's not like I'm like, hi, I have an HP, uh, MV, yada, yada, But you're yada. not talking about the current model. You're asking about a very specific question for, for one laptop that they probably aren't even selling and that you should have been able to figure out yourself. 
Okay. Like, well, why don't we just get rid of the salespeople altogether then? If, if, yes. if, it's, if, it's, if it's up to me to know everything going in and not be able to accept there would be any... Yes, questions. have you not noticed that over the years? That there's oh, no, far I less sales people? Oh, no, I like, have. There are you're not, that this is not, it's like, I'm not... It's not new. Unlock. Like, it, it is... Like, there is, like, like I said, there are stores that won't shop in because I, I'm not standing around waiting for someone to unlock something. Like, where it's mm -hmm. like, are you like that too? Where it's like, if I go somewhere and I need allergy medication and it's like, it's locked, I'm like, I'll just go somewhere else. Like, if I need it, headphones what? or something, like, it, like you know how allergy medication, you, you don't ha you don't have that issue up there where no. allergy medication is locked up? Oh no. my god, it's the worst thing ever. It's like allergy medication of all kinds is locked up in a lot of stores. Although there are some where it's not. I'll only go to the ones where it's not because I'm not sitting here waiting because there's no one on the floor. I'm not waiting for someone to come over and unlock it for me. I'm like, fuck this. I'm just leaving. Like, That's what you do? Yeah. But like the... Oh, jeez. Well, now I know not to I... go to those stores at all. Like if I need headphones, oh I won't goodness. go to Walmart. Like, you can't talk to a person and get them to open it up? It's, I don't care about talking to the person. It's the waiting for them to come over. Because I've waited 10 minutes for someone to come over and unlock something for me. And I'm like, this is just a fucking waste of my time. What are you talking about? You have to, like, go up and then they walk with you back. No, you gotta... Well, no, the way it works here is there are buttons all over... See, here's the issue. We live close enough to New York um, that people think the quote-unquote high crime rate that doesn't actually exist what the new york post says exists um is impacting them but far enough away where people are stupid and don't realize that it's not even if it was out here is not the case so what ended up happening it was a lot of stores overreacted and threw a bunch of stuff that they considered high value behind these locking boxes so if you go to walmart it used to be just the video games were locked up behind this cage. You had to wait for something to come over. But now it's like the video games are locked up. The All the mobile phone accessories. So if you need a phone charger, it's locked in this glass case. If you need headphones, they're locked in this glass case. And it's like, all you're doing is making me not come here to buy electronics. Because I'm not going to sit here. Because you put one person who is manning the jewelry department, the electronics department, and the office department. Like, so, you have one person working there, so I'm, like, I'm just not going to buy. I'm not going to sit here and wait for this guy to, to do what he's doing and unlock this for me. I think you've sufficiently ranted. <laughs> this is, a, this is, let's take, let's take five, because I got to use the restroom. I got to pee. Okay. Um, so Josie so, is giving me the axe on the, on the rant. So yes, because it's now been up. about half an hour to 40 minutes, about... I think that's reasonable. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you just I, wake I, up pissed off. Jeez. Well, yeah. Well, no. I've been. This has been something I've been stewing about for like two days now. So uh, my only point is that you're wrong for stewing about it to begin with. <laughs> but anyway, my only point is that you're wrong. End of sentence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, talk about some Star Wars news. You've said that you had some this week. Besides the video game, you were excited about that, and I thought we'd spend more time talking about it. Well, no, we know. did the video game news. So what we're going to talk about is the other two Star Wars Battlefront games that came before the EA ones. These were both mobile, um, and by mobile, I mean old-style mobile, where PSP and Nintendo DS, not mobile as in phone. Um, so these games came after Battlefront 2, because Battlefront 2, if you recall from our discussion there, was not intended to be a PS game um they spent about another year after it came out for ps2 and xbox porting it to psp and that was a huge undertaking and it sold very well for them on the psp because the game was basically the full game that you were playing on your home console but on the psp with very little cut content um so that was a big deal for them and because that did so well for them on PSP, they started two other games, Renegade Squadron and Elite Squadron, which are both Star Wars Battlefront games, um, that I think are the beginnings of kind of the peak of what the franchise could be. It's not truly the peak because there are hardware limitations the PSP had, but some of the cool things in this, like ideally if they ever did Battlefront 3 the correct way, 
um, should be brought in. So, like, the space battles that were in Battlefront 2, where it's like, you have, you know, sometimes they'd be lined up like this, where it's like, you're here, the Empire's here. Sometimes they'd be side by side. And it'd be these giant space battles. In the new version, there was a command post in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and this command post is a little floating platform in the middle. And what you could do was you could go to that little floating platform. And it was in, when the battle started, it was neutral. If you captured it, it would spawn your ships on it. And you could spawn your people on it to go and attack the other ship. So it became a source of ground battles in these in a way that it really wasn't in the original game in Battlefront 2. Because you could ground battle in space in Battlefront 2, but to do that, it was kind of difficult because you had to land your ship in the opposing hangar, which was easy for the if you're trying to land in, if you're playing as a Republican trying to land in the Confederacy command ship because it went straight through, so there's a lot of space to land. Um, it was not the case in any of the others, because it's a very shallow thing, and if you're trying to get in as someone's taking off, you're going to blow up. Um, and if the, the first time trying to get in, you have to kind of like, if the ship is like here, and your ship is here, like this, if you're coming out, you have to like dip down like this, go like this, or go... You can't really go up because it's auto turret. Just go down like this, come like that in at an angle, and go like that because That's auto super descript descriptive for all the people listening. Yeah, I'm realizing it's like if if they're parallel, you have to like dip down below the 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 main battle line. These are descriptive line. words. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm working. You have to dip down below oh the main goodness. battle line. So sassy. And you have to you have to go down beneath it because there's only like two turrets on the bottom of the ship. So you have to like dip down, go the entire length of the battlefield down there without getting into without getting blown up. Then you have to come back up at an angle and come in like that. And that would basically get you in every time, as long as someone's not taking off at the same time. But you have no way of seeing that. Because if you're coming at the hangar at that angle, you can't see into it. So you just kind of like pray as you're going in, like and then you have to as soon as you get in, because the roof is so low, you gotta like immediately dip and it's it's a pain in the ass to land. And you have to do that until you can disable the auto turret on the side. Um, once you do that, you can just go in straight. Mm. But, you know, for that first time, it's like, whoop, 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 boom, in. And um, it, this gave you another platform because this platform was so large and both sides had an entry to it. Both sides could go and land people and then you can go and fight in the middle. So if you wanted to have those big ground battles, you could. Um, while in space, which which made the space battles more interesting. You could customize your classes. Each class had set weapons that you could pick from, but you were able to customize which weapons you had on your loadout. Um, and you can customize your physical appearance and your color of your costume and all that, which was mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, and um, when you got to Elite Squadron, which is the last game, um, there were transitions from space to ground battles. Um. And there wasn't as much impact as you would hope between them. Like, there, was, there, uh, the, like, there wasn't as much of an impact from the space battle down to the ground battle. Like, at the end of the day, the ground battle was still more important. But if you wanted, you could fly into space and then go join the space battle. Or if you're in space, you could fly down to the planet and join the ground battle. Um, mm -hmm. Which is kind of cool. And these are all things that, like, because it was on the PSP the PSP didn't have the hardware capability to make it feel as robust as it could. Like, these are all really cool things, but at the end of the day, they still felt kind of lacking because of what the PSP was capable of, and for Elite Squadron, what the DS was capable of, which was even less. Um, so it, it, it did feel kind of weird. Um, and the other thing that was really interesting about these was that these games, like, Battlefront and Battlefront 2 were very much intended to be relive the battles from the movies. When you get to, um, like, you know, these two, they start introducing some of the EU material. Not a ton, but, like, there are ties to, um, like, uh, um, Force, Elite, Force Unleashed, which was the big initiative at the time, which was this, you know, the, that was the one with Starkiller, the cool guy who played with two lightsabers who, you, who would fuck shit up with the dark side of the Force. Mm -hmm. Like, that... 
you you'd be able to play at like uh the, the Jedi master in that game, Rom Coda. He's someone you would um what's it called? You would be able to play as as a hero in it. Um, and I seem to recall there being battles on some of the worlds that appeared besides Fallujah in um what's it called in uh in in Force Unleashed. Um, and these two games tend to get forgotten about. Um, when it, when we when we look back on, on Battlefront because they are portable games, um, because they were games that were meant for uh, what's it called? This feels like an episode of the backlog files right now because I'm just talking. Um, like they they feel that they're games that were not inherently lesser, but they don't feel like they're, they're as robust. Like had these come out on what the consoles were at the time, which would have been the PS3 and the Xbox One or the Xbox 360. Um, these would have been huge games. Um, but EA fucked that up because they bought Pandemic out, and uh, and and that killed the Battlefront franchise until Respawn came back and did their version. Mm hmm. Hmm. Do you have any questions for me? I don't know what's happening. Sorry. We we were, were you not paying attention? I am paying attention. I just am not fully following. Okay, so what's what 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 aren't you following? Um, what are we talking about? Oh, good lord! <laughs> I heard the middle. I just didn't hear the beginning. Because you weren't listening. This is a fiasco of an episode all around. It's going up. Uh, don't worry. Um. Okay. Um. But uh, yeah, it, it's. I would say that in ways it's better than Battlefront 2, these two games. Um, but as a overall experience, it's not quite. Because the the ability to customize your loadout is really cool. Mm -hmm. So you can play exactly the way you want. And it never feels broken. Like in all my time playing these games, and I played a lot of these games back in the day on my PSP. Um it never felt like, oh, this is the combination you need to use because it's the best loadout. And there was never a point where I was looking up what's the best loadout for me to use, which happens sometimes where it's like... Oh, so know, it's very balanced. Yeah, like when you play a game, like you've played games before where it's like you can customize your moveset and then you're like, all right, fuck it. What's the best one to use? I just want to plow through this. Like, I never felt that with this. Granted, I'm also someone like when you had all the classes, I was always the one. I just want the one with the, with the rifle. Like, don't give me a sniper rifle. Don't give me a shotgun. Just give me the one with the rifle and let me go about my business. Oh. So you're basic. Yes. Oh, okay. When I was younger, I used to use the fuck out of the rocket launcher. Like, but it, it's le it's one of those things where it's like, it's fun to try and blow people up from a distance, but the range and the targeting is awful. Mm-hmm. So it's like if I like if I'm if I have a rocket launcher and I'm trying to shoot it like if if the farther away the person is the more the rocket starts veering off in other directions and not hitting who you're trying to hit. Okay. Um, and the explosion mechanics in the early games didn't quite work right, where it's like the rocket basically has to hit them or or hit almost hit them. If it if it explodes on the outside of a, of a wall and they're on the other side of the wall, it, it's like you did nothing. So I'm like, all right, why mm -hmm. am I even bothering? Like, um, but yeah, these games are really fun. Like, and I think that this is one of those things when we talk about media being lost as we transition from consoles to consoles. Like, these games are basically lost media at this point. If you do not have a physical copy, you cannot play these games anymore. Um, so, preservation. Yeah. Sorry. What? I'm just laughing. I'm uh, allowed to laugh. You don't need to be so judgmental all the time. Oh, I don't have to be judgmental. Yeah. Call I'm me not judging. Grandma. I'm just laughing. I'm allowed to laugh. I'm not judging. I'm just laughing. Oh my goodness, at you. you're rude. What's next? I mean, that's all I got. That's all you got? I mean, what was look, our topic this week? Just the battlefield games? Battlefront. Battlefront games? Well, I thought we already talked about those games. Well, no, there were four games. Oh, my goodness. There were four. Well, really, there are six. 
Um, so do you have a preferred one? I think that if it were, like, all things considered, I'd probably go Battlefront 2 would be the one that I would play. Like, if, if I were to use, I, like, for me, it's probably Battlefront 2, then Renegade Squadron, then Elite Squadron, then, um, then Battlefront 1. Um, but Battlefront 1 does have some really great maps that didn't make it into the later ones. Um, like, when you play Battlefront 1, we're going to talk about this again when you play it. Um mm -hmm. Like, when you play Battlefront 1, the platform's level on Bespin is fantastic. Because the entire battle gets bottlenecked on this one bridge. And it's just a clusterfuck on this bridge. Okay. Like, that's one where if you want to use a rocket launcher, that's when we use a rocket launcher. And, and um, what was it? Like, the other Bespin um, is also really fun. Bespin Cloud City. Where it's like I... it, it's like a ring, and then there's a one command post in the middle. Mm -hmm. So what you have to, what happens is the best way to do it is to just fight your way around the ring and control all of those, and then all mm -hmm. your troops will converge on the middle one. Okay. So. It sounds pretty cool. I am. Yeah, the, looking forward to the general to try gameplay. Checking these new ones out, or the the remastered versions out. Yeah, the general gameplay loop is you have a certain number of command posts in the beginning, and the opponent has a certain number too. And there may be one or two that are neutral, and sometimes it'll be you have one, they have one, there's a bunch of neutral ones. Um, okay. And what you have to do is you have to fight your way across the battlefield and get to the command post and stand next to it long enough that it gets captured while keeping the opponent away from it. Hmm. So you have to kill the opponents that are trying to get in while you're standing next to the command post. And a lot of times, you kind of just got to stand in open space and hope you can kill everyone who's trying to spawn in there. Um, so you have to, that's how you capture command posts. And you win by either capturing all the command posts and holding them for 20 seconds, or by reducing the, uh, the number of uh, respawns that the enemy has down to zero. Mm-hmm. And each okay. team starts with 300. That's the general. There's a, there's a capture the flag mode. Um, in Battlefront 2, there's like Hunt, which is you can, it is you, you can play as either the indigenous animal to the planet, or you can play as the humans, and you have to wipe out the, the animals, um, okay. which is really fun because, like, on Endor, you can play as the Ewoks, and you got to kill the Empire. And then, like, the Hoth one's amazing because you play as the wampas oh and they don't have weapons so you could go and beat the shit out of the empire that sounds kind of cool like you because you have so much health because they're bulky and they have a ton of health so you just gotta go and chase them down and just beat the shit out of them physically nice yeah it's it, it's very cathartic in a weird way um there's well, excel mode things up is not weird for that to be cathartic um there's XL mode, which is like they they put like hundreds of people on the field at once, and it's just a clusterfuck. Which is, those are always really fun. Um, and then there is uh, assault mode, which is a point based thing in Battlefront Two, where you get points for capturing command posts, you get points for killing, you get points for you know doing like in in space battles, you get points for blowing up parts of the enemy command ship. Um, okay. So like if you blow up the communications array, it gives you eighteen points. If you blow up the engines, it it give it uh it gives you eight points per engine. If you blow up their command bridge, it gives you eighteen points. So the goal is to get to one hundred and eighty points. And then nice. in Battlefront Two, there's hero mode too, where it's hero assault, where it's you're only playing as Jedi, and Sith and other characters like that, and everyone's just running around the field in this giant clusterfuck. Oh, Josie left. Well, Josie's laptop died, so we will wrap up there for today. Uh, next week, we'll be back with more stuff uh, in the near future. Um, not entirely sure what we're going to cover yet, but we will let everyone know when we, you know, when we decide, whenever that is. Um, but until our next episode, have a great rest of your week.